Now, we've already looked at the Dublin Core, of course, and the Dublin Core, as I've said, is intended to be generic. It's intended to be a lowest common denominator metadata schema. Right? It has the bare minimum number of elements so that you can describe literally anything with it. Now, the categories for the description of works of art, the CDWA, is much more specialized. It should be fairly obvious from the name that it's intended to describe works of art. And like a lot of metadata work in the arts, uh, the CDWA comes from the J. Paul Getty Trust and uh, work at the Getty Institute. Now, we'll look at other Getty metadata products in future videos. Um, and like I say, they've done quite a lot in this arena. Now let's actually look at the CDWA. And the first thing that I want you to notice is that there are two lists of categories here, core and full. The core categories are these here, the CDWA core categories. And notice, first of all, that they are organized into sort of top level categories themselves. The core categories is this entire set here, and it drops down off the bottom of the page a bit. Um, by my count, there are 36 core categories that are presented as the most important to use. Now, already, that's more than twice as many as Dublin Core, right? We're already, right off the bat, much more specialized and with a larger set of possible, they're called categories here, but we can also think of them as elements, larger set of elements. Let me scroll down just a bit, and we get to the full list. And notice that once again, they are have top level categories, these ones that are in all caps, and then subcategories below that. I don't actually know how many categories and subcategories there are here, but I've read that there are over 500. I'm certainly not going to get into each one. I'm just going to do a very broad brushstroke overview here. The point is, where Dublin Core is about breadth, the CDWA is about depth. And there's a lot of depth when, once you start talking about 500 elements. The point of the CDWA is what you're essentially being told is, you want to describe an art object? Great, here you go. Here's everything you could possibly ever want to say about it. Use this set of 500 plus elements. You can make any kind of statement about an art object you could possibly want. But don't panic. If 500 elements seems a little overwhelming to you, and rightfully so, you don't have to use all 500. You can use the 36, the smaller set of 36 core elements. The idea is that those 36 are what is absolutely minimally necessary to adequately describe a work of art. And so let's look at some of the CDWA core categories, actually. So what we have here is a list of definitions of categories, right? You just have all of the categories listed out and uh, note that some of these are core and some of them are not. But let's look at object or work, because quite frankly, if we're talking about an art object, the object itself is certainly the most important thing we could be talking about here. So we might as well use that as an example. Object work is core. It is one of the core elements. And some of the subcategories here, like catalog level, are also core, but not all of them are. The top level category is core. Some of the subcategories are core, but other subcategories are optional. Now, what we have here is subcategory catalog level. Definition, an indication of the level of cataloging represented. For example, group, subgroup, volume, item, etc. In other words, we're harking back to 
the question of what is the metadata record pointing to? Is it pointing to a single unitary object or is it pointing to a collection of objects? Then we have object work type, the kind of object or work described, and then some examples, table, altar piece, drawing, etc. Dates, description, and then some examples. We could get into considerably more detail on all of these categories and subcategories, so let's look at the more detailed level. Again, we're looking at object or work, we have a definition, and then a list of the subcategories. What we have here is some general discussion of the object or work top level category, and then notice first subcategory catalog level, catalog level. Some narrative description of each of the subcategories. But th that's a pretty extensive narrative description. What I want to get to is the explanation of how to use these subcategories. So we have subcategory, catalog level, definition, the level of cataloging, right? Is this a single object? Is it a collection of objects? And some examples. Item is a single object, but volume, group, subgroup, collection, all of these others are different forms of collections. Some guidelines for how to apply this particular element, how to use it, what an item means, what a group means, what a volume means, etc., etc. But where I really want to go with this is here. Terminology. Controlled list. Use a controlled list of terminology. For example, item, group, subgroup, etc. In other words, the recommendation for using this element is to use this particular set of terms. Item, group, subgroup, collection, etc. Essentially, the CDWA is presenting you with a very small controlled vocabulary. Recommendation, use these terms. Let's go back up here to um, object work type. And again, we get a definition, we get some examples of types of objects, painting, photograph, etc. Some guidelines for how to apply this metadata element. And again, I want to scroll down and look at this piece. Terminology or format. It says authority. Control this subcategory with generic concept authority. And it goes on to list a couple of different controlled vocabularies. For example, AAT, which is the Art and Architecture Thesaurus, which I believe I've already mentioned. That particular controlled vocabulary happens to also be created by the Getty. But the point is, the CDWA is saying, use a controlled vocabulary, and here are some suggestions for controlled vocabularies that are external to the CDWA that we recommend you might want to use. Those are what are called authority files. They are controlled vocabularies, they're thesauri, that are the authoritative set of terms in a particular area. What we have here already is a very lengthy set of elements where each element has a set of recommendations for how to apply it, including recommendations for whether or not you want to use a controlled vocabulary, and either they provide you, the CDWA provides you with a controlled vocabulary, or it says use these others here out here somewhere in the world that exist. Now let's look at an example of how this actually gets applied. And the Getty provides us with this very nice list of different types of art objects and records, metadata records for each one. So let's just look at the very first one in the list, oil painting, which happens to be this item. So this is the metadata record. Object or work, that's the top level category or element. The subcategories are catalog, level, and type. 
catalog level is item. That is from the controlled list, that small list of terms that were recommended to us, item. Type is painting. That comes from an authority list, a thesaurus, from somewhere else, created by someone else. Now, I don't actually know which authority list the term painting comes from, but it really doesn't matter. The point is painting is a term from this thesaurus that comes from somewhere else outside of the CDWA. Again, classification, top level category, terms, paintings, and European art comes from some controlled list. Category titles or names, subcategory, text, etc. The title of this painting is irises. That is free text. It, because you want your title field, just as in Dublin Core, to allow any string of characters what at all. You want to be able to name your art object anything you want. So what we have here is this set of elements, categories is what they're called here, but we can think of them as elements, and sub-elements, with recommendations for how to provide values for those elements, right? Either it can be anything you want, free text, any string of characters you want, as for the title, or use a controlled vocabulary, and here's the controlled vocabulary you want to use, or use a thesaurus, and here are some recommendations for external thesauri that you may want to use. So that's the structure of the CDWA.